of this is to make my first guest tonight feel really at home. He's made more than 100 films, light romantic comedies all, like The Curse of Frankenstein, The House That Dripped Blood, The Brides of Dracula, The Vampire Lovers, The Creeping Flesh, and The Monster from Hell. Please welcome man to whom necking means lunch, <laughs> Peter Cushing. I thought that was Christopher Lee for a moment. Christopher Lee, <laughs> oh, yes indeed. <laughs> you worked a lot with old Christopher, didn't indeed, you? Indeed, he rang me up before I came this evening, sent his very dear love. He's a very nice man. I'm going out tonight, but I shall, um... I shall record you. a video you. of it and report, he said. Good man. Yeah. This is very tasty. It doesn't form yes, as much as I was it hoping. was before the oh, was curtain it? went down. As yeah, the top has gone off but, it now. Um, just a little blow. I'm not going to bother drinking it now. Blow it. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, that, uh, <laughs> I say, dear boy, hmm? is it a rude word to mention Paris, Parc de France? Yes. Yes. Mm. I was there. I know, yes. That was hard, I was if with you, you. Like. yes. We're great rugger fans. Oh, yes. It. But uh, I had a wonderful stand-in for 30 years, uh, Paddy Smith. Yeah. He came from Waterford. And um, we were great fans of, of the game. And uh, one occasion when... Uh, England played atrociously. That's a Ireland change. Was isn't it? Pardon? <laughs> Ireland was superb, but England beat them by one point. Yeah. The next day, Paddy, I said, "Don't be well, what about?" And he said, "Oh, Peter, we would have won if we hadn't lost." <laughs> it was, it was, this is wonderful logic. <laughs> well, it, it is. It's a logic all its own. You see. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about. You played a lot of, of comedy parts in theatre and yeah. TV. You did a film with Laurel and Hardy, didn't you? Yeah. Why was it that you always came back? Why did, why did you start? Let's begin at the beginning. Why did you start with Hammer Pictures? But why did I? Yeah, the Hammer House of Horror. Um, I had done a great deal of work in the theatre and a great deal of work on television. Um, but I was about 50 and there was nothing in the bank, you see, which worried me a bit because I was looking forward to my old age was dear Helen, and um, one wanted to get a few premiums. Uh, uh, the, the older you are, the more expensive are premiums for insurance, you Don't see. tell me. And um, I remembered seeing the, the, the original uh, Frankenstein with, with um, Boris Karloff and Colin Clive. And uh, um, Hammer Films, uh, at that time, aren't I... I do talk a lot without saying anything, don't I? But never mind. <laughs> but also, I could sit here. This is why we keep having you back. <laughs> There's no point having people who don't say anything. No, that's no, not what we're not, looking for. Get it in the right never order. Never mind. Never mind. Carry on. Now, where was that? <laughs> yes. Um, it was talking about that rug of the rug. Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah, but upset me. Uh, at that time, in the in the fifties, anyone to do with television wasn't very po popular with the cinema because people were staying at home and not going to the pictures. Mm. You see, except one firm, which was Hammer, and they thought, now if there's um, someone who's popular with the audiences and liked. If they put him into a film, it might get a few of the people away from their firesides into the cinema again, and they did just that. It's, what was uh, the first film? And the film was the first one that I did for them, because it's called The Curse of Frankenstein. And it was an enormous success. It, 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 it only, it, the pound meant a little more then, but it only cost about £65,000 to make the picture. And they were so brilliant, they had top men in every department, you see. And America couldn't get over that they made it in three weeks, and it left budget. Um, and they, everyone wanted to jump onto the bandwagon then and then make other pictures. And dear Helen said, now Peter, I, 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 know, I know how you feel about these things, but I, I've seen your work in so many other mediums on the stage and uh, television and the wireless, and you can play so many parts, and it's an awful pity because film people like to categorize you. They like to slot you and say, right, he's the horror type, or he's such and such a type. Um, um, and I knew she was right, but at the same time, I did feel we ought to get a little bit of the cash money, in, the in, 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 in the you, bank. Yeah. I, I think that really was like why. They've done other things as well. But of course. They made such an impact, those pictures. I'm still seeing you. Well, see. I mean, you're quite proud, aren't you, to, to oh, be associated? Oh, wonderful. You are Van Helsing, mm. who is always driving that stake into Dracula's heart, uh, uh, continually. And then you'd say at the end of the movie, there, he's gone now, finished. <laughs> The old garlic 
and, and, um, and the stake through the heart has done its work. We'll never see him again. And about six months later, there'll be another Dracula film and be up again. Uh, 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 right there, yeah. I mean, did you ever get fed up driving the old stake? Can't steak? keep a good man down. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, there were uh, so many varieties of doing. The only thing that I did get, um, uh, it's awfully difficult to hold a stake there and do that without looking at the hammer. And the director said, don't look up there. No. <laughs> No, no, it was uh, yeah. knuckles. Did old Christopher Lee ever protest about his, his success in driving he, of stakes he through went, his heart? He went through hell, really. He did. He did. Well, that was chat. the place for him. He was racket, after all. Yeah, yeah. But they had to keep reviving him. Now, Van Helsing was a hero, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, he was, was the essence of good. The Dracula. Yeah. Can you give us a few tips in, in these straightened times? I mean, what, what should the everyday person know about stamping out a vampire? I mean, apart from the steak mm. through the heart, which, of course, is the sovereign remedy. Yes, well, be very unsocial and have garlic for dinner. Garlic for dinner. keeps them off. But mm. a holy water is very good, too. Burns them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And the rare sunlight. Sunlight. Yes, that... you can run along a table and leave it a curtain, pull it down. Yeah. That makes it more that effective. That gets them scampering yes, for yes, the old... Uh, yes, 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 yes. Right. Yes. Now, the book you've written is called Past Forgetting. Ah, how sweet. The that? Hammer Years. That is kind of you, because I didn't want to be a contender for the big plug. Isn't Betty Davis up for that? <laughs> <laughs> Betty, Davis is our, Betty Davis and Lord Grey are our all-time winners. He was gorgeous, wasn't he? Yeah. I won't only be at Harrods, I'll be at, at Eaton too. <laughs> <laughs> now, you played the hero as Van Helsing. Yeah. But uh, Dr. Frankenstein was a bit of a villain, wasn't he? Didn't you? Um, depends upon how you look at it, dear boy. I always think of him as a chap who was... Um, before his time, rather like Dr. Christian Barnard, or Knox, who, uh, rather like a motor car, he wanted to open up the human body to see how it worked so that he could put it together again. <laughs> nice little hobby, you know. <laughs> right, right. Do it, did, do it. Did, uh, first do it yourself. The first chat. transplants. Mm, mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did it first, but Dr. Barnard did it much more successfully. Did it, was uh, it always a temptation with horror movies to, to overact? Oh, I think no. You must take it fr uh, frightfully seriously. I'm not terribly earnest, but you, uh, if you're doing the impossible and you laugh at it, then I think you're, you're being very rude to your audience. No, it, take that very seriously. But give them a laugh. You see, Shakespeare and Disney were brilliant. They would have you on the verge of tears and then something will make you laugh. Mm. Um, and that's what I think you need to do. It. I, I, they, they laugh in the wrong places too. I remember in one of the Frankenstein pictures, I was set upon by a whole lot of idiots from uh, an asylum, and uh, hit all over. And I ended up in bed, absolutely swathed in bandages, with just a little tiny bit showing there. And dear Francis Matthews was playing my assistant, and he came up to me in bed and said, "Don't try to speak." And it bought the house down. <laughs> <laughs> they were unfortunate, but yeah. we, we, the, the, the script writers did put in uh, bits here and there where, where, uh, to, to make people laugh. But uh, on the whole, as I say, when you're doing the operations, if there's only one doctor in front, and apparently they'd love to see those pictures, um, you must do it right for do his think, sake. Do you think the new brand of horror films, what do you think of them? Do you think they're as good as the old? I, I must admit, I'm not a, a, a horror freak. Sounds very funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Someone has said, aren't you, I think. No. Get <laughs> um, out of it. Um, but I judge by the letters I get, which are many and very lovely. Um, and they find the current horror film repellent, whereas they, they never find those that Hammer did so. They, they felt rather like the thing of going to a fair and going in the ghost train, and the boyfriend put their arm protected for you around the girl, and they knew they'd come out of the sunshine safe at the end. Right? Yes, the new ones are, are very kind of gory. There's a consistent a bit, uh, rivers and, of and blood. Um, uh, the, the use of bad language, four-letter words and profanities, and uh, it's, it's not like this necessary. Program, <laughs> <laughs> not with me on it. No, no certainly not. No. Uh, incidentally, don't I jump from one thing to the other? But interesting, jump, jump. takes the life. Yes. Um, tomorrow night, no, tonight, Tomorrow the book comes out. Yeah. Tonight opens for the first time in, since 1929, Noel Coward's Bittersweet at the Saddler's Wells. And the title of the book, Past Forgetting, yeah. comes from the song, I'll See You Again. So isn't that a good omen? And they've yeah, sent yeah. me a ticket to go and see it. Excellent. Oh, I appeared in Bittersweet, in a production of Bittersweet, by the Rathmines and Earth Car Musical and Dramatical Society. 
in Ireland in about 1833. Oh, when it was written. Yes. I, was, I was one of six fellows who used to stand behind a settee while, while the, the main soprano sung Zigoina. And we were always looking for the Zigoina under the carpet. <laughs> and the but did you, no, no, Joe, apart from the date, did you really play in it? I did, yes, I did. How lovely. Yeah. Because you, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the BBC's gain is a theatre's loss. You're a tremendous actor. And these wonderful impersonations you do. do you know, to and the wonder of it is that I have you back so infrequently. <laughs> You can only come every week, please. I'm, as I say, I'm hard to get. You've only got to ask me. <laughs> it's always such it's a like pleasure to see you. Like. And I mean, you, you're marvellous to, to tolerate sitting there in this old chair. Oh, it's absolutely But we thought it would make you feel a little bit at yes. home. I hope we'll see you again soon. I hope you'll keep well. I'm afraid you will be seeing me again and in all the old familiar places. And good luck with the book, too. <laughs> Thank God you. Bless you, my dear Peter boy. Peter Cushing. Thank you so much.